Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the sexiest gorilla in the jungle, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm better now. How are you, Nathan? I'm doing fantastic. And, you know, do you mind if I take a second before we jump in to just, I'm going to give a little bit of a plug for Leads Lab, if that's okay. Do it. Okay, so I have, I have to, a guilty admission, I'm actually a little bit behind on Leads Lab. I joined the very first day it was opened. I was a huge fan. You showed me what was going on behind the scenes when you were building it. I was like, dude, I need to be in on this. Um, I helped you promote it, but I also got in on it. And uh, I have to say, so since starting Leads Lab, I got a client right away, like doing two of the things that you, that you t- say to do on Leads Lab. I got a client like the first day that Leads Lab was open. and. Yes. Yeah, and I'm just now finishing up that job. I've got to turn in the final draft of the copy today. And yesterday, before I'm even finished with the last job, I had two people hit me up. One guy, he, he, ha- he works in the financial industry. I'm not a big fan of writing for the financial industry, so I'm probably not going to take that job. But another guy came to me, pre-sold, works in the solar panel industry, and it just is a matter of getting on the phone call with him and making sure everything's, all the ducks are in line. And so before I'm even done with this project, I had two people lined up waiting to work with me. And I can 100% say that this is, well, part of, partially because my reputation as a copywriter is growing. But I know that both of these people came from Facebook due to some of the stuff that I was implementing from Leads Lab. Leads Lab is three weeks in. Right now, as we're recording this, I'm, on, I'm still a week behind, but just off of implementing the stuff from the first two weeks, I've already had three opportunities for clients. So thank you for that. I just wanted to start off the show with uh, uh, some gratitude and appreciation, man. This is how we do it. You just <laughs> made my day, brother, man. That's awesome. Wow. Super okay. happy. So that um, uh, gratuitous fellatio out of their way, <laughs> what do we got? What do we got planned for the podcast today? Well, there's, there's different stages or different phases or different ways of client getting. And from my perspective, there's really three of them. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is there's, there's three different avenues. Let's see how many ways I can figure out how to say this. There's three different ways to get clients. One is go get them, right? You go initiate it, outbound stuff. And then the second is get them coming to you. It's all about inbound lead generation. And then the third and my favorite is strategic partnerships. This is what I call influence architecture. This is getting influencers and kind of the heads of state of your industry to kind of have you as their secret weapon or the behind the curtains guy or gal who they send all of their cream of the cl- cream of the crop clients to. So there's, there's in my, in my mind, there's really three different ways to get clients, go get them, have them coming to you and then having somebody else sending you the perfect clients. And, uh, there's a lot of ways to do lead gen. There's a lot like cold calling or cold emailing or networking events. They all basically fit under these three umbrellas, going and getting them, having them come to you and then having other really highly sought after experts sending you their best clients. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So personally, I'm in between the first and the second stage. I, I got Leads Lab because I needed help with the going out and getting clients. Uh, but I also have, I have occasionally or pretty frequently people recommended from other clients. I have, I worked with one client on a sales page. They say, Hey, you should holler at Nathan. He can write this for you. I think a lot of our listeners are probably in between those two areas. And I want to focus a little bit on those two areas, the things that people should know about those two areas before we get into the third one, because I'm also involved with you on a project where it's all about the third one. And a lot of times I feel like I'm just barely keeping my head above water in in that particular project. But um, I know that 
there's similarities to each of these levels, and then there's vast differences. So I kind of wanted to go over what are the similarities and differences between these three different levels of client getting. Sure. Um, the similarities across these three different avenues of, of client getting really come down to knowing who it is that you should be then having conversations with and knowing them intimately. We call this ideal client avatar. Um, if you know who they are, you can go find them. If you know who they are, you can attract them to you. If you know who they are, you can have other people send them to you, right? Um, obviously, if, if you're going to sell something to somebody, you need to know what they want and need. But there's some, there's some really interesting distinctions here. Lately, I've been using this example of um, the migraine headache, right? If I'm dealing with a migraine headache right now, that's my current situation. That's my symptom. And in that space, if anybody, if you've ever had a migraine headache, you know this, certainly, you'll do just about anything to get that fucking thing to go away, right? Now, what's interesting about that is the migraine headache itself is not actually the problem. The problem is something way different. It's way deeper. It's caused by something else. But if I don't have a migraine headache right now, Unless I just had one this morning or yesterday, I'm probably not looking for a permanent solution to migraine headaches because I'm not dealing with it, right? So knowing what they need really is more about knowing what they're dealing with situationally right now that your solution solves the, the root problem for. But they're different things. In my, in my case, it's diet and my posture, right? I sit at a fucking desk all the time. And I like wheat products, right? So gluten and my posture sitting at this desk generally tend to be what causes me migraine headaches. Well, I'm not going to not eat flour tortillas and I'm not working on my, you know, my posture from a, uh, it's consciously always at the top of my mind. But when I have a migraine headache, I'm ready to solve that issue right then, right? So you got to know what they, what they need. And then the third piece is how do you either initiate or invite somebody to a conversation? So these are the three things. You got to know who they are. You got to know them intimately. You got to know what exactly they're dealing with in the moment, right? That is an indication or a symptom of the big problem that you can solve for them. And you got to know how to get into a conversation with them. These three pieces are really the core of all of these different avenues of, of getting clients. And what's interesting is if it's really difficult for you to go get a client, it's going to be even harder for you to attract a client to you. If it's really hard for you to attract a client to you, it's going to get really hard to have somebody else send you the right perfect kind of client for you. So it's almost like these are three different levels of this. And the first level, going and getting them, comes down to knowing who they are intimately, knowing without a doubt what they're actually facing and dealing with situationally right now, and how to initiate a conversation with them. If you can do those three things and you can do them well, proficiently, then you can figure out how to attract them to you very quickly and easily. Once you do that, then it gets really easy to make relationships with really high level people in your industry and have them sending you their perfect clients, which are also your perfect clients. So my question on that, going back to your situation, you've got a headache right now. I know what you need right now. And I also know what you need in the long term. So I know that you need a better diet or I know that you need maybe a weekly massage. But right now you probably need an Advil should I stop selling the weekly massages and start being a drug dealer instead? That's funny. In some cases, yes. But really what it comes down to is, um, and we've gone over this before in, in other episodes, they're, they're different stages for most of us, right? Specifically those of us that are experts, either consultants or service business owners. They're different stages of dealing with a client. The coffee date, the lunch date, the dinner date, and then breakfast on Saturday morning, right? Those are the four different stages of, of client creation, as I call it. This first stage, coffee date. If, 
if I don't know that I want to know you more, you're going to have a hard time tying me down for an hour or two or three for lunch. But if we go to coffee together and it's awesome, 10, 15, 20 minutes, it's going to be really easy for you to get me into a lunch date. Now, let me put this into the context of the headache thing. If I'm dealing with a splitting migraine headache and I've had them in the past, I know generally what does and does not work to get me out of having that headache right now. But if I'm having that headache and I'm looking for a different solution or I've connected with you and your content in the last couple of weeks and you've talked about, hey, the next time you get a headache, do this weird thing with your left hand, right? Pinch it with your, with your thumb and your forefinger of your right hand in this one spot and it will begin to relieve that headache. That's just bullshit pulled right off the top of my head. But let's say that I did that. Now I have a little bit of respect and you've got some legitimacy about knowing what I'm dealing with. And guess what? Now I'm paying attention. Okay. So without getting into a full on course, because you have a tendency to do that when I, when I probe you for information, besides knowing who they are, what they need and how to initiate that conversation for the second stage, getting people coming to you. Um, what is, what is specifically different about that stage? What makes that stage more advanced than the first one? Well, when people have a need, they go looking for a solution. So in this stage two, you've got to have a highly targeted profile hub where people can come and get enough information to know if they want to get more information from you or not. The next piece to that is there's a breadcrumb trail and I call this a relationship conversion funnel. And what that does is it filters and sorts the leads and the prospects for you, right? It does this through qualifying. Now, once you've qualified somebody and you filtered them, you know, maybe they're ready now, or maybe you've identified that they're ready in three weeks or two months, you can message them differently. And what's interesting about this is everybody's using these tools on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and everywhere for automating the conversation. Most of these people are using the wrong stuff to automate the right things or using the right things to automate the wrong stuff. There is a certain um, set of activities in inbound lead generation that should be automated. This makes it so you can spend 20 to 30 minutes a day actually peopling with those that have already been filtered and sorted. And done right, for most people, this looks like one to two clients inbound a week, like you just experienced, right? You used a couple of pieces from Leads Lab which is stage one, used a couple of pieces to that and not even the whole thing, just a couple of pieces. And because you've got some of these other pieces in place, you've got a highly targeted profile hub, you've got a relationship conversion funnel and you filter and sort people through your content a little bit. Now let me show you how to automate some of that stuff and make the filters and the, and the, um, the sorting even that much better. One to two clients a week just on autopilot, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I think that what I did mainly in my business wrong is I skipped step one and went straight to step two. And I, I've been friends with you for a long time. You always harp on, hey, you need to get step one down before step two will work for you as efficiently as it can. And going through Leads Lab for the last couple of weeks, I've noticed, I was like, oh, wow, all of this foundational stuff is making the stuff I've already got in place the lead magnets that I have, the website that I have, the social media profile funnel that I have, <laughs> all of this stuff is actually having a bigger impact now that I'm getting the foundation set up. So that's step one and step two. The third one, getting influencers, the heads of state in your industry to send their clients to you. There's, there's one main thing that, that I want to say, this is... I don't even think people should attempt this until they have the first two steps. And am I wrong for that? Because, no, okay. no you, you're correct. Here's the deal. And, and you just said it, all of the stuff that you've been doing for years, you've been trying to do the, the client attraction stuff. What's interesting is 
you can do that and eventually it will kind of work. This is, and I'm going to use the example, a lot of people in their business try and get referrals, right? A lot of people that have been doing their thing for two or three, four or five years, most of their business actually comes through referrals, but it's random and it, it's happenstance and it happens, you know, maybe twice next month, but it doesn't happen again for two or three months. And there's this roller coaster effect, right? Well, when we go about doing our business like you have, where we try and set up all the, the client attraction and all of that stuff without having done stage one first, it just takes longer and it's not organized and it doesn't work really well. Now that you've gone back and you're starting to implement some of the stuff from stage one from Leads Lab, now all of that other stuff, it works because now it like clicks together the right way. You're using the same Lego set instead of different pieces, right? Well, this stage three is the same thing. If you have stage one down to where you can go get a client, give me three days and two hours a day and I can go get two or three clients for my $30,000 thing. Once you're able to do that, and it could be a thousand or 1500, whatever, but once you're able to actually go get a client from scratch in two or three days, then you can set up the attraction stuff. Once you're able to do that, now you've got the pieces in place to actually get the right kind of referral partners. And this is the thing with, I call it strategic partners because it's not referral business. Referral has a place in strategic partnerships, but what referral business generally um, insinuates is that I'm going to send you a client, you're going to send me a client. I'm going to send you a client, you're going to pay me for it. You're going to send me a client and I'm going to send you and your wife to the opera. There's always this back and forth tit for tat thing. That's actually not how it works because somebody eventually feels like they're getting the short end of the stick. There's a much better, easier way to make that happen, but you've got to be able to go get clients. You've got to be proficient at having clients come to you before this works because you've really got to know who your perfect clients are so you can identify other people that could be a competitor or could be a... Um, a cooperative in your space that serves the same marketplace. And now at that point, you're able to identify a problem that that influencer, that cooperative or that competitor has with their marketplace that they can't see. But because you really understand who your clients are, you're able to see the problem that they can't. And then you provide a solution. After you've built a relationship using all the stuff we teach in, in leads lab and, Stage two, which is affectionately codenamed currently Client Magnet because we're just now building it. Once you're able to do that, then it's easy to establish a relationship with the right people and have them sending you their top five or 10% clientele. And that is what real leverage is about. Take away paid advertising altogether, it doesn't matter. If you've got relationships with other heads of state that serve your marketplace, you're never without clients. And I think one of the like things that blew me away when you were explaining this to me, it took me a while to get this actually because I was so used to the old model, the tip for tat. You send me a client, I'll send you a client. When you were explaining this to me, you said, no, it's about saying, hey, your clients, you do this for your clients. I can do something that will, if you send me your clients, it'll make you look even better. So positioning yourself as the person that makes them, the, the head of state, look even better when they send their clients to you. And one thing that you brought up was be cautious of not threatening or not, um, gosh, I don't even know how to word it, but I know that you said it one way, which was, make sure that when you're, when you're doing this, you're not something that, that poses a threat to what they're doing. Yeah. It's, um, so the whole thing, anybody who's listening to this, think of, think of the realtor in your town. Who's just got a 15 or 20 year business. Everybody knows them. Everybody loves them. The thing they actually do more often than not is they make other people look amazing right? The guy that goes in and fixes the pool, the cleaning company that comes and cleans the house, the landscaping company, the painter, right? The real estate agent goes about making those other people who are good at their thing look even more like rock stars. 
and this is the this is the component that a lot of people don't get. It's not about competition. You can do this with somebody else that sells the exact same market, the exact same thing that you do, but it's more beneficial when you find somebody that serves your marketplace in a slightly different perspective, right? And so now you're a value add. And the way that we do this is we build a relationship with them and we make them look like a rock star to their client base. And by doing that and solving a problem, we're indispensable. They will never let us go. Nice. Okay. So I feel like we kind of got like a crash course from A to Z in this podcast episode, but I also feel like it was being just completely fire hosed with some banana cream pie. So if people want to maybe get a little bit deeper into your world and uh, maybe even talk to you about helping them implement this in their business, what are some resources that people can kind of um, get more than just the tip? So first, our main Facebook group, which is Guerrilla Army Nation on Facebook. And then the second is start with 30dayleadslab.com, 30dayleadslab.com. Um, we, we do everything through our Facebook group because that's where our community's at. Um, and I would start there. And of course, catch other episodes of the podcast, which you can get at salesgorilla.com salesgorillapodcast.com. Nice. All right, Landon, another fantastic episode. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, until next time, I will catch you later. Much love, brother, man. You have a great day. Peace out, Cub Scouts.